Good morning, Mount Movers Church. Good morning to our online family. And good morning, especially to those of you who are new today. We want to say a special good morning and welcome home. It is a very cold day to get out and come to a new church, but we are so glad that you did. And you know what? We believe that it's not an accident that any one of you are sitting in this room today. It's by divine appointment. That means God has appointed you to be here for such a time as this, to experience God's love and to experience the love of God's people, and more importantly, the power of His Word. So if you're new this morning, Pastor Brad and I would like to invite you to come back on Wednesday night, we do a group called the Newcomer's Life Group, and it is an opportunity for us as pastors to get to know you and to just kind of kick back and let you learn how you can really experience life here at Mountain Movers. We have a really awesome story that God has brought us through, and you'll hear that, but come Wednesday night and be a part of that with us. This morning, we are in our part two of Fresh Start. Last week, Brandy kicked it off. Well, she did an awesome job talking about breaking through barriers. How many of you guys would just say, this week I need to break through some barriers? You know what? If you fasted, you had to break through some barriers because when you fast, you're always attacked, just like Brandy said. So that was a very timely word coming into that season. But today, we are in part two, and today's message is entitled this, See It, Believe It, and Live It. We are going to believe God that we're going to see it, we're going to believe it, and we're going to live. Pray with me this morning if you would. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that today, Lord, you appointed each and every one of us to be in this room and to experience your presence. God, we know that without you, we are absolutely nothing. So God, we ask today that you would wrap us up with your love. God, give us the power of your word. Lord, let our ears be open to receive. Let our hearts be open, Father God. I pray that the Holy Spirit would be in this room present, convicting us, Father God, and drawing us closer to you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, coming into the new year, there was this guy who, he was really, really serious about doing things differently coming into 2016. He was serious about setting those new resolutions, and, and not just setting them, but actually walking it out and making sure that by the end of the year, he was really going to be on track, and he was going to do everything that his heart had set out to do. And so, he was praying to God, and he was he was just thanking God for the strength that God had given him, uh, and, 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 and his prayer went something like this. It was, Lord, you know, thank you so much, God, for, for your faithfulness and your strength so far in this day. God, you have been so faithful. Lord, I, I haven't lost my temper. I haven't gossiped about anybody. I, I haven't fallen into the, the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. God, I, I, I haven't dishonored anybody. God, I'm doing so good. And I can only attribute it, Lord, to your mercy and your strength. You're so amazing. But God, in just a little while, I'm really going to need your help more than ever before in just a second when I get out of bed. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> I mean, isn't that the truth? It's like, man, we want to do so good. We have we have these things that we want to do for God. We want to just live big and accomplish these things. And living for God is sometimes hard, is it not? Living for God can be really, really difficult. And, and some of us might say, you know, it would be easier just to stay in bed. And it would be easier to live for God if you just stay in bed and never get up and you never do anything. It would, it would make it a lot easier. But um, how many of you guys can really relate, right? Right? And so I, I think that living for God sometimes is like riding a bike. When you first start to learn to ride a bike, you're going to crash and burn a lot. You're going to fall and you're going you're gonna to crash a bunch. But the more you work at it, right, the more you get used to it, you get better and better. And you start riding. Off. Does anybody you ever click with anybody that we were riding on two wheels? Does that ever? Do you ever think about that? It, there's two. It's, there's not three, so... It, it can fall over, right? It's crazy. I remember riding a bike, learning to ride. It, it was terrifying, right? All I could see in my mind was my face scuffing the concrete, right, when I fell over. And I had worked so hard every day, and I was so proud of myself when I finally got to the point where I could balance it. And speed is your friend, right? And I was able to take off. You don't slow down. Don't slow down. Because if you slow down, you're going to fall over. So... So I remember how good it felt to finally get that thing up on two wheels and to, and to do it. And I got better and better and better. And sometimes, yeah, you can crash, but it's not likely. Because you get so good at it, you just learn to, you just learn to live with it good. And, and that's what living for God is like. It's like riding a bike. And so um, I hope that encourages you. 
I, I think it's a good analogy. But um, today we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna slow down and really think about where we are and where we want to be in the future and what what we want that or what we believe God wants that to look like. So there's three things that we're gonna hit you with today. We're gonna talk about getting a vision from God, getting it in our heart, and then walking it out and seeing what that's like as a daily part of our lives. All right. So I know that God um, God wants so much for you this year. And I don't know about you, but I don't want... I'm thankful for the things that God, uh, you know, did for, for us and for me personally in 2015. But we're, we're in a new year. And I'm believing for the moon. I'm believing God to do amazing things in my life. And that's how God wants us to think. That's how He wants us to, to, uh, to look towards the future. To, to really believe that with Him, all things are possible. And so today I want to talk for just a moment about vision. And, um, and so, I, I want to start with this. Helen Keller, you guys know who she is, or was. Um, she was born deaf and blind. And she was once asked the question, what can you think of that would be worse than being born blind? And her response was so poignant, so powerful. And she said, to have the ability to see and have no vision. To have the ability to see, but have absolutely no vision. How powerfully true is that? How often do all of us who have the privilege of being able to see with our human eyes, we go through life and we have no vision for our life? Think about that. Let that sink in. How often do we get so caught up with life and doing life that we don't slow down to get a vision for our life? God doesn't want us just to just to go to work and make money and have kids and, and die. That's not what this life is, got, is about, guys. God wants so much more out of our lives. Proverbs 29 and 18, I want you to look at this. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And what happens is we perish with our dreams. We die with our dreams dreams because we don't have a vision to see those dreams come to pass in our lives. The dreams die with us and it's tragic. I can't think of anything that's, that would be more tragic than dying with your dreams. Never fulfilling the purpose as to why God placed you on this planet. Can you imagine doing that? Can you imagine living out your entire life just working, having a family and doing, doing life and then just dying with your dreams. Never having fulfilled the reason why God put you on this planet. You guys know the scripture where it talks about one day we'll stand before God and He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into this eternal rest with me. Right? What that indicates is a life that's been lived with vision. A life that has been lived with this attitude and mindset to say, God, I want to be used by you. I want to be available to be who you want me to be and do what you want me to do. How many of you guys in your mind and in your heart can say that that's the life you're living out today? That you're truly making yourself available for the vision of God to come to pass in your life. How tragic for us to live for ourselves or just get caught up in the 90 to nothing lifestyle, just doing life, and never see that dream come to pass in your life, the dream that God has for yourself. Man, how many of you guys would be honest right now with yourself? How many of you guys could really be honest enough with yourself right now to say, Pastor Brad, I, I believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that there are dreams that I've just let go of. There, there are things in my life, I, I had dreams at one time in my life, maybe marrying a particular type of person, or maybe, uh, uh, maybe a career choice, or maybe your dream was to finish school, or maybe your dream was to, uh, I, I don't know, whatever it is, but you just let go of it. You just totally, completely let it go by the wayside. You just kind of gave up on your dream. I would say to you, some dreams need to die. Do you know what I'm saying? Some dreams were not the dreams that you needed to be dreaming for your life in that time in your life. It wasn't, it wasn't God's plan or His will at all. I remember when I was, I was in the seventh grade, and uh, man, did I have this crush on this girl. Oh my word, right? 
Her name, her name, check it out, her name was Holly Starr. I didn't know this woman. My kids are pointing me in life. No, I did not know this woman. Her name was Holly Starr. And she, she was a model. Beautiful, beautiful girl. I mean, man, I had a crush. No, listen, guys, you know, I'm a, all right, don't tell anybody I said this, all right? I would sit in my, in my, in my room playing guitar to Holly. And, and there's a picture of her in the yearbook. And, I was, and my sister caught me. And she walked in and she said, what are you doing? I said, nothing. Shut up. What are you doing? Get out of my room. She's like, are you singing to your yearbook, you freako? I'm like, I'm just thumb through it. Got my picture on page 39 and put. I wasn't looking at my picture. I was looking at her picture because I had a crush on her. And I thought, and, and I remember, I remember praying, God, I know you're real. And I know you can do this. Please let me marry this woman. <laughs> and I would pray this prayer. And, and it was at that time, you know, Garth Brooks. I was 13. I was 13, yeah. I, I had it. Hey, hey, I was a long-term planner, right? I had plans. I had like a five-year plan and a 10-year plan. That was part of the five-year plan, I think. Um, I would have been 18. It'd been cool. So, so I remember, you know, Garth Brooks. How many of you guys remember the song "Unanswered Prayers"? Remember that? No offenses. A set tape. Played it every night. Played it every night. Played that whole tape, right? And it would stop like at midnight. It clicked, and then I, I hit it open and I flip it over and push it back in and play it again. And I'd play that tape. I ran that tape in the dirt, right? But you got to that song, "Unanswered Prayers," and you listen to the lyrics of that song. And it talks about sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. And, and in that story, he goes out to a football game and he sees this girl he had a crush on in high school. And he had been praying so hard that God would give him that girl. But he's got his wife next to him. And he says, sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Now you want to hear something freaky? Missy's, Missy's middle name is Star. <laughs> Misty Star. Is that crazy or what? It's like, I was wishing on the wrong star. But I had it right. God wanted me to have a star, but it wasn't Holy Star, it was Misty Star. And I didn't know. My prayers were just a little bit off. But God, but God honored me. God honored me, and now. I have Misty Star Helton. She has my last name. Booyah. And I don't know if I can show you this, but her face is on the screensaver of my phone because I worship the ground she walks on. This is my star. And God honored me because he honors our dreams. Isn't that cool? Isn't that? Honest to God, her name was Holly Star Equity. Crazy? Misty Star. No, sorry. Awesome. God honors. God honors. I had a vision, though. I had a vision. I had a vision for a star, and God gave me the star that I that I really needed. Right. So, so what is what is vision? What is vision? It's to have sight. It's the ability to dream. To have re revelation or enlightenment. It's the power of anticipation in our lives. Expectation, seeing the attainable yet invisible. What does the word perish mean? It means to die or to backslide. How many of you guys want to die or backslide with the expectation or hope of doing something great for God? It's tragic. It's tragic. And here's, here's, here's the beauty of it all is we are in control. We're in control. I mean, God's in control of our destiny, but He has given us control of our daily lives and our routines. Our lifestyle, our choices, our decisions, our, the, the words that come out of our mouths, the way we think, the way we act, the way we treat people, the way we plan, the way we prepare, the way we practice, the way we pray. There's so many things that are up to us. It's just about having the vision to be able to see, God, what do you want for my life? God, what, what do you want for 2016. And I want to tell you that, that, that and God calls you to be a visionary for your life. How many times have you just made yourself slow down enough to say, do I have a, do I have a vision? I, man, I hope this hits home with you. Do I have a vision for my relationship with God? Vision is the ability to see things not just as they are, but as they can be. Do you have the ability 
to imagine in your mind what your relationship with God can be. Have you thought about what you want your relationship with your spouse to be? Have you thought about what, your, what you want your finances to be? What you want your health to be? What you want your time and your, your, your mind and, and, and your emotions, your calling, the purpose for your existence on this planet? Have you taken time to look at what that can be? Do you have a vision for your life? Or are you just satisfied with just getting through life? If you're satisfied with mediocre, then just exist. Just exist. But God has made you so much greater than that. And God has so much more for you than that. You're not mediocre. You're not made of the average. Do you not realize that you are from the very seed of God? Do you, do you realize that God has called you to be extraordinary and not ordinary? Do you know that He has a plan and a purpose for your life that so many times we can care less because we get so stinking busy? But Pastor Brad, you don't understand, right? I work three jobs. And I've got ten loads of laundry. And I don't even have time to balance my checkbook. What are you talking about? My house is a wreck. There's kids everywhere. We've got practices. We're running them here. We're running them there. Well, who sets your schedule anyway? Who's in control? Are your kids running your life? Is your laundry running your life? Is your boss running your life? At the end of your life, there's nobody to blame but you and but me. We are responsible for our own lives. Stop playing the victim. Stop saying, what was me. Stop making excuses. We were, we were talking to the search team this morning about this. Every excuse is equal. Wow, how's that? Because they all produce the same result. It didn't get done. <laughs> right? It didn't get done. You show up late to work, and I'm your boss. I'm going to say, why are you late? Wait, wait, wait. It doesn't matter. Because <laughs> you're late. It produces the same result. It doesn't matter why you're late. I'm not that mean of a boss. Yes, I am. But I listen to people's excuses sometimes. I mean, if it's an emergency, things come up. But we've got to stop making excuses. Right? We have got to stop making excuses because who are we damaging in the end? Ourselves and our vision. We're damaging the vision that God has given us. So let me tell you today, this is so powerful. We can't help how we came into this world. I realize that some of us in this room, you were born into circumstances that just really causes all the odds to be stacked against you. To where you'd say, Brett, you don't understand what I've come out of. There's no way that success or vision or anything positive can come out of my life because of where I'm from. You can't control what you were born into or how you came into this world. But you can control how you go out. You can control how you play out this thing called life because God gives you opportunity each and every day to make different decisions to determine a brighter and better future. You've got to get a vision for your life and for your, your marriage and for your kids and for your money and for your time and for your ministry. You've got to get a vision. You've got to slow down and get a vision. That was the first thing that you have to do. If you're going to have a fresh start, you've got to begin with the end in mind. But you know what so often we do is we do exactly what Brad said. People in the world who know what success looks like and they can taste it, they do that but aside from God. Okay, so point number two, what we're going to look at today is that you've got to write down the vision, but I'm going to tell you a little story about a guy who was in a situation where he needed a fresh start, but he knew he didn't have the answers. He couldn't see ahead to know what his future needed to look like. He needed a vision straight from God. And this guy is in the Old Testament in a book that only has three chapters. You may have even skipped over it if you've ever read through the Bible. Maybe you've heard of him and couldn't even pronounce his name. And he's sure to know how to spell it. But his name is Habakkuk. He was a prophet in the Old Testament. Say that real fast. Habakkuk. Habakkuk. He was a prophet in the Old Testament and at a time where everything in his life and his country was falling apart. Okay? Everything. The legal system had crashed. 
There was the Babylonian Empire, and they were going around destroying every other nation around Judah. So they had already taken down Egypt. They had already taken down the Assyrians. And all they were doing as Judah, Habakkuk was the prophet to Judah, is they were living in fear day in and day out. Every day, their lives were total and complete chaos. And Habakkuk had had enough. And if you look at the first chapter in the book of Habakkuk, he comes to God, and right out of the shoot in verse 1, he says, God, why are you not listening to my cry? How many guys have ever felt like that? You feel like your life is utterly falling apart. You don't know how you ended up, where you ended up, and you feel like God is not listening when you talk. It's like your prayers are not getting above your head, and you're just so frustrated. That's where Habakkuk found himself. This morning, we're going to go to chapter 2, and I'm going to show you what Habakkuk did. Yes, he came to God kind of frustrated and griping, and then he said this, and I'm going to read this to you. It's Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1. It says this, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampant and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered and he said to me, now listen, just pause for a second. I want you to just back up. What Habakkuk said is, I've had enough. And I'm going to stand my ground. And basically he went up to a watchtower and he said, I'm not leaving this place until God speaks a vision into my life. I'm not going to move from this place. How many of you guys seen the movie The War Room? Awesome movie where the older lady makes her closet into a prayer war room because she was doing battle. I want you to imagine in your mind, no matter what's going on in your life, if you really want a fresh start, you need to put your feet somewhere and say, God, I'm not moving until you give me a vision for my future. I don't want my own vision. I want your vision for my life. God speaking into my life. That's what Habakkuk was doing. And then he said, I'm going to watch and see. So look, I'm going to put on my spiritual eyes. I'm going to watch with spiritual eyes. And this is what God speaks to him. He says, write the vision and make it plain on tablets. That he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him. But the just will live by faith. God began to speak to him. And here's what he was saying. He said, as I begin to speak this, write it down. I don't want you and your pea little brain to forget it. Because you know what? Literally... Even as pastors, sometimes God tells us things, and do we not forget? Like, we don't write it down, and we literally forget it. Later on, he speaks it again, and it's like, oh, man, God, forgive me. You already told me that once. Write it down. And so this is what I'm encouraging you to do. You want a fresh start? You find a war room. You find a place to plant yourself, and you, as a man or woman of God, get on your face and say, God, Give me a vision for this year. You tell me where you want me to go this year. You tell me what you want me to do this year. You put on eyes to see that when you begin to open the word, those, those words can leap out to you. And then begin to write it down. Have a journal and begin to write it down. God says this about my year. God says this about my relationship with my spouse. God says this about my family. I stand on this. Then when the going gets tough and life, you're riding that bike as Brad's talking about, and you hit a ginormous rock in the road. And you completely crash out. You know what you do? You go back and you get that journal and you open it up and you say, God, you told me on this day at the beginning of the year, this was the vision for this year and I'm going to stand on it. Because you know what God told Habakkuk? He said, wait for it. Why? Because it wasn't going to happen automatically. It wasn't going to happen right then. God has things for your life that are not going to happen right now. We want things that we want it now, right? We live in a microwave society. Like we want an awesome steak dinner, but we want to pop it in the microwave. How many loves a steak dinner out of the microwave? Like, that is straight out disgusting. If you raise your hand, shame on you. Like, you need to go to a good steakhouse, right? You have to wait for what's really, really good in his life. And God was telling Habakkuk, you better be willing to wait. And the final thing he told him is this. The just will live by faith. The just will live. You know what it means to live? To live literally means this. It means to preserve. It means to enjoy life. That is, is that not what all of us want at the end of the day? 
Whether you're a believer or not, you want to enjoy your life. At the end of the day, you want to lay your head on your pillow and feel like you have enjoyed your day. But so often, we get in this life of chaos, and we can't see a vision for our future because we're so caught up in our today circumstances. We're so caught up in what's going on right now. You know, we've got a family. I hope you don't mind, Kathy. I'm just going to tell your story really fast. Monty and Kathy, in one week, their heat and air unit went out of her home. Their, I don't even know, like their washer went out of her home and their well went down all in one week. Three massive financial things happened in one week. And she called me and she said, hey, I know that God's got this, but maybe we could use some extra prayer this week. Because like all this just happened and I said, you know, and I began to encourage her. And do you know it wasn't just a few days and she called and said, the insurance is going to cover 100% of it all. Do you know that is God stepping in an Airbnb? Yeah. They could have got their eyes so caught up and said, God, why did you why did you do this to us? We're trying so hard. We're so faithful. We do, we do all of this for you. Habakkuk could have got his eyes on everything else going around. But what he did is he said, God, I'm going to plant my feet in one spot. And I'm not moving until you give me a vision for this year. And I'm going to wait to watch it come to pass. You know, finally today, we, we need to realize the power of building routine into our lives. You know that you are only as good as your habits? You are your habits. Think about that. You are who you are because of the habits you have. Think about your health. You are who you are because of the habits you have. If I stop by Sonic every day and eat a big, fat, juicy, greasy, bacon triple cheeseburger with jalapenos on it, which I would love to do. But if I did, I don't, but if I did, I would become that big juicy cheeseburger. It would affect my health and I would probably die of a heart attack and I would be 200 pounds with a big fat head and I would die of a heart attack because of what I eat. That's one teeny example. You are your habits. If you don't take time to budget the finances that God has given you, then you're going to reap the reward, if you will, or the benefits or the lack thereof of not properly managing God's finances. You are your habits. So we have to get a vision from God for our life. And we have to write it down and we have to commit it to our heart. But then finally, we've got to act out the routines in our lives and commit the discipline that it takes to walk that out and see those things happen in our lives. Does that make sense? And God calls us to do that. Do you know what a disciple is? It's a person of discipline. A disciplined follower of Jesus Christ. Get a vision for your relationship with God. And decide what routines you need in your life to walk that vision out this year. Get a vision for your marriage. And decide what routines you need. You know, we, we date every week. Not all, It doesn't just stop with me worshiping her face on my cell phone. We actually we go on dates. We spend time together without children. <laughs> right? We intentionally build routine into our life to create the sort of outcome that we want to see in our life. And we give God all the glory. Right? And, and, and the list goes on and on. So decide what routines you want to commit to God. As a disciple, as a disciplined follower of Jesus Christ, decide how you want to honor God in the routines of your life to see the vision that God has given you for your life come to pass. How I many of you guys can do that? Raise your hand. Yeah. Wonderful. Stand up with me today if you would. I hope this message has been encouraging to you. I hope, I hope that you're not just satisfied with average. The Bible says that everything you do, we're to do it as unto the Lord and not as unto men. In every area of your life, God has called you to do it as unto Him. Not for yourself, not for anybody else. Your children don't belong to you. They belong to God. Your body belongs to God. The finances, they belong to God too. Your time belongs to God. Your calling and your purpose and your vision, it was given to you by God to be something greater than what you could ever imagine yourself being. 
I want to tell you this morning, you're called to greatness. Don't underestimate the person that God has called you to be. Do not settle for less than second best. Don't settle for that. Step up and be who God has called you to be. I look around the room today and I see some people that I know God is so proud of. Because you guys have worked so hard in so many areas of your lives. And we're just getting started. You can't control how you've come into this life. But you can't control how you go out. Let's pray today. Father God, we're grateful, Lord, for the fresh start that you give us. Each and every day, God. This month, Lord, we're celebrating the fresh start you're giving us for this year. And God, I pray that you would, you would just begin to deal with hearts and minds. I pray that you would give us all a vision. The ability to see things, not just as they are, but as they can be. In every area of our lives. Let us see this community, not as it is, but as it can be. And how as a church, we can engage our culture with vengeance and with the love of God. And turn it upside down for the glory of Jesus Christ. That people's lives will be changed for all of eternity. Because of the love that is flowing through us. God, we take this calling and we, we take this vision that you've given us as Mountain Movers Church. God, to, to, to literally just pierce through the dark of this world that we're in. And rescue people from sin, from death, hell, and the grave. God, let us take this calling, this vision that you've given us, and let us run with it like never before, Father God. Let us as families and as individuals run with the vision that you've given us, Father God. That you would be glorified in the end as the vision comes to pass in each and every one of our lives, God. That people would recognize, they would realize, and there would be no room but to admit this is only because of God. Restore marriages, restore relationships with you, Father. Restore health, a renewed vision for every area of our life. Because then when we come together as a church, as a whole, God, we become something great. We become a force with, with such tremendous momentum to be able to make a difference like never before. Because each and every one of us, as individual parts, have a vision for you and for your heart. God, do this in us today. God, I'm praying that you would do something supernatural. I pray that if there's any in this room that are just... You know, they, they, they've listened to this message today and they've said, you know, I'm, I'm done dreaming. Don't give up on them, God. Encourage them today to not lose heart and to know that you are not through with them yet. Encourage their hearts now, I pray, Father God. Inspire your people. Lift us up so that we can do higher and greater things for your glory. God, we love you so much. We thank you so much, Father God, in advance for the wonderful things that are going to come to this church. God, I thank you that you're providing the, the finances even now. God, to, to expand this building to make more room for more families. I'm so grateful. Put a vision in our hearts as your people for this year. To go out and win the loss, whatever the cost, and to fill this place up with hurting, hopeless, helpless people. God, we love you. With all heads bowed and eyes closed today, I want to give an opportunity for those who might say, Pastor Brad, I have a vision to make heaven. That's, that's where I need to start. That's my vision right now is I want to make heaven my home. I want to tell you that you can do that. As easy as just admitting that you have fallen short in sin. Just like each and every one of us, you've fallen short in sin. And the Bible says we have all fallen short. We all fall short of the glory of God in so many ways. But God is quick to forgive you if you'll only ask Him for forgiveness. If you'll believe in your heart that Jesus is who He says He is and you confess that He is Lord, you dedicate your life to Him, you can be saved 
today. You can have heaven as your home. And I hope that you would make that decision. I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. With heads bowed, eyes closed right now. I'm going to count to three. And when I do, if you want Jesus as your Savior, I want to pray with you right where you are. Are you ready? One, two, three. Who are you in this place? And for those of you watching online at home or wherever you are, that goes for you as well. You raise your hand and I want to pray with you where you are. The prayer goes like this and the church will agree in unison together for those making this decision right now. Father, I love you. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I know that I've sinned. I know that I've fallen short. I ask that you would forgive me right now. God, I, I believe with all of my heart that you are who you say you are. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I dedicate from this moment forward that I'm going to live for you, God, according to your word. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give God praise today for the fresh start in Him. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.